Hey everybody, Michael Atwood and friends back with another jaunt across Indiana. We'll get a trim with a 96 year old barber a bit later in the show. We'll also look at some priceless World War II memories down the line. And yes, we'll even get a little soul over at the shoe repair shop. But our first story reminds us that even today, fun and games can still be experienced without a joystick or video monitor. See what I mean? For our first excursion across the Hoosier State this week, we venture into the ups and downs of modern industry and old-fashioned fun as producer J. Robert Cook heads to Columbus and introduces us to a real bunch of yo-yos. Out Columbus Way, on a side of town dotted with industrial plants and high-tech factories, check out the right assembly line and you might find yourself among a lot of yo-yos. That's because the Flambeau Corporation's Columbus, Indiana plant is home to the world famous and much beloved Duncan Yo-Yo. This is the only production facility that Duncan has for yo-yos. Uh, Duncan also does puzzles and uh, we, we do other toys and we also manufacture some of those right here. And we're very proud to be one of the remaining toy manufacturers in the United States. There's actually seven different styles of yo-yos that we manufacture here. One is the professional, the pro, and the pro is basically two discs, and then we have two lenses, and then we put inserts in showing maybe your face or, or a product uh, symbol or logo inside, and that is one of the, the yo-yos. The others are the, the wheels. And the wheels come in various silvers, blacks, and they have different spokes on them, just like your, your wheels on your automobiles. And then we have the butterflies, and then we have the midnights, and then we have the glows, and then we have the imperials. So there is a variety. The yo-yo is believed to have originated in the Philippines, where it was first used as a retractable weapon for hunting. The yo-yo as toy didn't make its appearance in the U.S. until 1929. Since then, the basic design has changed little. You have, first of all, you have the shell, and then you have what we call the disc. And there is, of course, two shells and two discs, and then it's held together with a axle. And all has to be balanced and precision and in order to make the play. And then the string has to be put on, and that's a special string. So really, is sometimes simple is very complex. The only noticeable change from days of yore has been the switch from wood to plastic as the material of choice in yo-yo construction. Although Duncan still markets a line of wooden classics for the baby boomer set. Still, the plastic yo-yo does offer one area of expression that the old wooden ones didn't. An inexpensive vehicle for advertising. It just never ceases to amaze me what they can actually put on the yo-yo. Um, we had marriages, uh, uh, anniversaries, uh, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> and uh, battleships. We had all kinds of, every state, I think we've done every one of the states, all of the parks. Um, and, it's, and it's kind of neat because I, like we, we just visited uh, the Grand Canyon and at the Grand Canyon, guess what? They have the Grand Canyon yo-yo. <laughs> and it's interesting. Okay, okay, yo-yos for fun, yo-yos for advertising, but what about yo-yos as motivators? Bruce Galbraith, headmaster of Park Tudor School in Indianapolis, knows they can be. As a boy in Detroit, his skill with the yo-yo even got him a job. I was like an assistant to the man that worked full-time for Duncan, and I would go to the dime stores and uh, hold contests after school and give away prizes and free strings. <laughs> Uh, I think the strings were two for a nickel, but they were free uh, if you did uh, well in the contest. This man and I actually went down our basement at our house in Detroit and invented what turned out to be the butterfly yo-yo, which is the yo-yo where they, in essence, we, we cut one in half and put a new axle in it and opened it up. And it made the lip opening wider, and it really helped young people for tricks that land on the string, because that's incredibly difficult to swing it around and land it on the string in that tiny opening and the butterfly, then I think Duncan patented that yo-yo, but we actually played around with that in our basement before it was ever marketed. 
Um, it, it's like anything else. You, you can't do it well, many things you can't do well when you first try. And if you want to stop, you can stop. But if you want to practice, you can get better. And my whole point with young people is that everybody can be pretty good at something. And so yo-yo can be that for somebody. Uh, people like to be doing something. And, and whenever you're doing something with the, com you know, if you have one of those little toys, you know, you play in the computer type deals, it's really not doing the type of balancing, the function, the eye, ear, ear, eye coordinations um, that the yo-yo can obtain and the self-satisfaction that you can do it. And so grandpa can play and, and dad can play and son can play and grandson can play. And all you do is just cut the string at various, you know, however tall you are and <laughs> away you go.